Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Egg Talks, live on Facebook and Instagram. I'm happy to be hosting this chat today. My name is Mary Beryl, I'm president of Talent Egg, and I'd like you all to welcome our guest today, which is Trevor Buttram, uh, who joins us from Career Connections, a division of the Insurance Institute of Canada. Welcome, Trevor. Thanks so much, Mary. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, Trevor is the Career Connections Program Manager at the Insurance Institute and Career Connections runs programs to help students and recent graduates learn about the insurance industry and how to hatch a successful career in insurance. Trevor has over 15 years of experience in career development and campus recruitment and he was also the winner of Campus Recruiter of the Year at the 2018 Talent Egg Awards which was judged by a panel of students and new grads just like you. So welcome, Trevor. So happy to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here and welcome to everyone online. We're really excited to have a little bit of a chat and explore the possibilities for a career in the insurance industry. Great. So uh, we're going to try and take as many of your live questions as possible. If you have any questions for Trevor, just leave them in the comments section and we'll try to get as many as we can during this next half hour. So Trevor, I, I think it's helpful if you just open up by telling us um, a bit more about Career Connections and the kind of work that you do every day. Absolutely. So Career Connections is all about um, introducing individuals who haven't yet been exposed to or gotten connected to the industry. So they're not working in insurance yet and highlighting to them all of the wonderful, rewarding career opportunities that are available in the sector, highlighting how it works and also illustrating the role that insurance plays in our society. Um, it's amazing to sort of take a look at and realize that we're at the forefront of the game changers. So whether that's climactic change, cybersecurity, um, drones, legalizing cannabis, um, the insurance industry needed to figure out um, sort of how to protect those assets um, how to um, engage in uh, the risk management in those spaces and ensure um, that we're really, um, uh, in, I guess, improving and, and protecting the lives of Canadians. It's really interesting. Insurance really is on the front line of reacting to some of the challenges in society and the economy. Absolutely. Um, and from our perspective, it's important to remember that insurance is the third pillar of the financial services sector. Um, so there's banking, wealth management and investment, and then insurance. And the other two, frankly, couldn't exist unless we were in play. Right. Um, so we're a, a pretty large contributor to the economy. Um, there are 126,000 Canadians working in property and casualty insurance, um, and uh, they really reflect the face and values of of, of society and and the makeup of our population. So the diversity of the actual kind of roles that you can get within insurance must be quite extraordinary. Absolutely. Um, although we promote nine gateway roles in the sector, they're actually more like job clusters. Um, and so they're operational and we'll, we'll get into some of those roles and what they look like. But there's everything from sort of the sales and service, um, the mathematics and the modeling that happens in actuarial roles, um, you know, the analysis and sort of the thinking work that's involved in being an under writer, for example, there's a real wide variety, but there's also things like business analysis, digital strategy, HR, accounting. They all comprise elements of the sector as well. So virtually almost anything that you can think of, there's likely a place for you within our industry. And so uh, depending on whatever your discipline is or where you studied, you can still potentially find a role within the insurance industry. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you've got sort of that arts and science background, um, you know, particularly the arts and humanities, for example, you're likely a strong communicator, you're a great writer, um, you have capacity to be able to um, do research and take something that's relatively complex and making, making it accessible to others. In science, you might have that analytical thinking skill, um, that um, analysis or scientific method of really getting to the bottom of something. Um, you might be able to participate even in something like claims investigation in terms of bio causation analysis with a chemistry background. 
there's really a, a wide array to be able to apply those skill sets. Um, you know, computer science and IT um, based roles um, absolutely playing a huge part in our sector as we replace our legacy systems and get more digitally friendly. Um, and legal studies or somebody who's got sort of that background or passion for the law, um, you know, insurance is a legal contract. And so there's, you know, the negotiation skill, but also even being able to understand the terms and conditions and limitations of what that policy is going to be able to offer consumers. Mm -hmm. And um, we did get some pre-submitted questions before this event, so I think I should get to them. Um, uh, here's one that's quite specific. How are statistics applied in the insurance field? Um, so let's talk about data. Um, it, we can use it in a lot of different ways. So absolutely, actuaries, they determine sort of the model for a particular risk and how um, much money needs to be in the premium pool at any point in time to protect all those who have purchased a particular kind of insurance policy. Um, they're really relying as well on, on data and statistics um, to be able to analyze how likely it is that a risk may occur um, and in fact become a reality. Um, so there's you know, that element. The other piece that um, you know, comes into play here as well is big data and the, mm. um, the number of data points that we have within the insurance industry, it's actually a commodity within our sector and now we need to figure out how we best leverage that and use that to shape new products or to even personalize or individualize the risk. Right now, when you pay your auto insurance, for example, it's normed to your population, where you live, how often you drive, those kinds of factors. Now we can actually, using telematics devices, even start to personalize or individualize how risky a driver you are. Right. And if you're a really good driver, reward you. And if you're a little bit higher risk, uh, make sure that your premium reflects that. There's apps that you can actually get. I, I understand the insurance yeah. companies are... Absolutely. InsureTech and uh, RiskTech are big business. Um, right here in Toronto, in fact, mm -hmm. is one of the largest... Um, you know, kind of hubs of where, where that activity is happening. New ones are coming out all the time, not just for um, things like telematics, but even the way that we distribute insurance products and services. So getting an insurance quote online, for example, being able to leverage apps or, or you know, virtual companies to be able to do that. Um, the other that's really interesting is even in the claims process, mm. being able to you know, leverage claims portals or devices to be able to manage that, and, and especially in the risk management space. It's fascinating um, what technology is going to be able to, to do and the impact that it has in this sector. Yeah, it's already having uh, quite dramatic changes in the way that we think of insurance and the yeah. way that as, as uh, clients of insurance companies, we interact with uh, our provider. Absolutely, and I think that that's um, kind of the fun part is seeing how technology and the human element, we're a people-driven business, customer service, um, according to research that we recently did on the changing workforce um, within the sector, is going to be um, one of the key differentiators in terms of what companies are able to do. So have, being at the forefront of that technology and an adopter and, and leveraging it to our advantage, but also being that trusted advisor and being able to co provide that concierge level of service um, to our clients is going to be paramount in terms of being successful going forward. So if you've got that blend of technical as well as those people skills, uh, insurance is a powerful. great sector for you. Yeah, great. We actually have some live questions that we should get to. Uh, the first one from Instagram, and it's a really good question. What are some typical entry-level positions in insurance? Um, so, you know, we get this question a lot, and all of the roles that we promote on the Career Connections website and on our talent egg profile have entry-level possibility. Um, but most commonly, and simply just because they're the largest represented um, within our um, industry, most people tend to get their start either in the broker-agent role as an underwriter and maybe as an underwriting associate or an underwriting assistant, and then as well in the claims space. Um, actuaries, absolutely, if you've studied actuarial science, your destination is, is as the actuarial associate. There are entry-level positions there as well. Um, so, but, uh, you know, no matter sort of where, where, you're, where you're seeing yourself in the sector, there's opportunity to be able to think about how, what the entry point might be. It just might be more widely advertised in those areas. Okay, here's um, a more philosophical question, perhaps. And you've touched on um, motivation about why one might join the insurance um, industry, but it says, why should I choose a career in insurance? I guess they're asking you to make your case. 
Absolutely. <laughs> um, I guess for me, it's why not? Actually, we recently published an article on Teledig that folks can check out about why insurance is an exciting place to be. Um, and we kind of give some top five reasons there, but I'll, I'll highlight sort of my personal uh, favorites. Um, so one, it's a diverse and inclusive community. Um, 62% of the industry are women. 36% of that is in the C-suite, so leading and running organizations. Um, the other is, is that we're in step in terms of representing um, people of color. 39% um, are um, under the age of 40 within the sector, so identify as millennials or Gen Z. Like from our perspective, that's um, you know, a leader in the mm -hmm. in the marketplace right now in terms of attracting you know diversity and market and as well young people to the sector. Um, the other thing to think about is it, with the industry is that no two days are really the same. We hear that time and time again from our um, you know army of ambassadors. There are three hundred and ninety across the country right now industry professionals who are sharing their story. They don't get bored in their jobs. They love what they do. Ninety seven percent feel that they can contribute to their company's success. 94% are proud to work in the industry. That's extraordinary. That's um, not just our ambassadors, that's the industry as a whole, according to our most recent demographic research. So insurance is quite a remarkably fulfilling place to have a career, it sounds like. Absolutely. 77% feel that uh, their company inspires them to do their very best work. Um, you know, The Conference Board of Canada has told us that those numbers hover more in the 45 to 50% mm -hmm. range mm -hmm. at best. Um, and so it's in the general labor market. And so it's nice to be able to see that really reflected um, more positively uh, in an industry like insurance. So it's all about getting the word out. Uh, uh, that's what you do. For sure. We're actually <laughs> in a, um, as great as we are in an industry in terms of the career paths that are possible for um, the students and new grads who are, who are contemplating what next, um, there's, there's a talent crunch. Um, and, you know, some are even calling it a retirement cliff, you mm. know, in terms of looking at 25,000 of that 126,000 are eligible to retire by 2027. Um, so that means that uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do in terms of being able to replace and to find creative, talented, and motivated people to join the industry. That's on top of the natural growth that's mm -hmm. happening within the sector as we continue to expand. And yes, technology may um, automate some aspects of the industry, but we're growing in other areas. And so it's really important that we're getting the word out and about really what I think is Canada's best kept secret in the labor market. Well, we're trying to help you stop uh, having it a secret that's and right. letting more <laughs> young people know that this is a potential for them. Fantastic. Uh, we have another uh, question from Instagram. What are some notable innovations in the insurance industry that you've heard of? Now, you've mentioned a couple related to technology, but is there anything else that comes to mind? Um, you know, autonomous vehicles, as they come online, the industry is needing to figure out how we transition from, you know, personal ownership of vehicle to perhaps even um, commercial or shared um, vehicle ownership and, and how do we... Um, make sure that those things are are in play. Um, I think as well, um, what's starting to happen is more interdisciplinary practice mm. or um, crossover between roles. You know, we used to be quite specialized, and now there's opportunity to really intersect and engage with your colleagues. I'll use the example of actuaries, for example. They used to um, sort of be perceived to be off in a room somewhere doing their data, um, you, you know, work and and statistical analysis. Um, but now they're really informing and, and driving the business decisions on the grounds so and meeting with underwriters and having conversations about what's in the best interests of our business and how do we offer a product at the best price but still meet our regulatory obligations. So that crossover and that interaction and that engagement, I think, is fostering innovation and new ways of looking at things. And, um, you know, with new products and services coming online all the time, um, you know, for example, David Beckham's legs are insured. The left is worth more than the That's right. right. Um, <laughs> I did you know, read about that, actually, um, in our recent uh, editorial. Yeah, um, where we were talking about it's not what you think. Right? Yeah. There's so much more to the sector um, than, than uh, folks initially realize when they're, when they're contemplating their career options. So this is a question that sort of reflects what you were saying, that may, perhaps young people don't really understand the insurance 
industry enough uh, to contemplate uh, a career within it. This uh, question from Facebook says, um, I didn't study business in university. What options in the insurance industry are there for me? You've yeah. talked about the different roles, but maybe you want to emphasize that um, it's not just one size fits all in terms of the opportunities. Absolutely. Um, and so I want to go back to your point about young people not necessarily understanding the sector. If we're honest, Canadians in general don't necessarily understand all that insurance has to offer. And there's a reason for that. We hope you never need us <laughs> after you purchase an insurance policy, right? So after you've got coverage in place, we hope you don't know any other aspects of the business because that means usually something's happened, um, right? And so um, risk has become a reality. So we um, you know, don't necessarily see behind the curtain about mm. all the other roles and all the other experiences um, that are required to make this industry gr go and grow. Um, when we talk about sort of backgrounds and experience profiles, yes, business could be definitely helpful within a sector that resides within financial services. Um, but um, when you think about the industry as a whole, we require so many different backgrounds and expertise um, to deliver on our promise, um, to you know, protect assets and to help individuals um, in times of need. So whether that be you know, a kinesiology background being applied in um, maybe accident benefits claims or somebody with that political science background Background, stepping into an underwriter role, um, you know, somebody with a um, engineering background working in risk management or loss control, um, you know, applying their skill sets and their knowledge and their expertise, um, again, to just enhance the business. Most insurance professionals attained or acquired their insurance expertise or knowledge um, while they were working in the industry. So they studied through the Insurance Institute of Canada and earn our flagship designation first, which is the Chartered Insurance Professional designation. And then they might work towards other certificate programs, maybe specializing in, com in commercial or risk um, management. Um, they might also move towards their fellowship or their advanced CIP. Um, so there are a variety of options to continue to learn and grow once you're in the sector. Most employers tell us they can teach insurance, but they can't teach those workplace critical skills that come from you know, a degree or diploma in uh, the areas that we've talked about. So they may come from a, a science background or a technology background or a or, medical background. Or you know, the paralegal program you know, out of a number of community colleges, for example, you're getting a really nice foundation, um, you know, in uh, understanding um, contracts and research and analysis, mm -hmm. and then being able to come in and apply that. You know, absolutely, there there are places for, um, as as we've alluded to, virtually anyone within the insurance industry, uh, if you have the right skill sets and the right attitudes and the right experiences. Uh, it's very that's very interesting. Um, in fact, we have somebody who's curious about wanting to know more um, from Facebook. Uh, yeah. Where can I learn about insurance? And uh, you've mentioned, even refers to the editorials we've been talking about. For sure. Uh, well, some of them are on Talent Eggs Incubator, um, which is our blog. We publish them there. Absolutely. Also, at your website, there's lots of information, too. There's a lot of content there. Also, on Talent Egg, there's the Careers and in Insurance Guide. Mm -hmm. um, we find that that's a great resource and collection of tools for folks to be able to check out. On our website, there are full career programs files. There are also um, videos that you can check out of real life people working in the industry, sharing their experience and their story. Um, there's a job site um, where you can even get resume tips and tools. Um, and there's also um, some really great um, uh, content just around uh, how the industry works, the value that it offers, and also how you can explore your career um, even further by taking things like our quiz. Mm -hmm. um, that'll help you kind of narrow down which area of the sector is right for you. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, the, there's a question here from Instagram, and it's, uh, and I think this is sort of more forward looking, future looking. What opportunities for growth does the insurance industry hold? Yeah, um, so a number of insurance employers um, do have uh, trainee or internship programs. Um, some of those are rotational. 
Um, so there's the opportunity to be able to experience different platforms. Um, one even has a global rotational program so that you can actually wow. um, rotate out of the country and get some global experience very early in your career. Um, and although those are really great launching points, they're not the only way to get connected and to have a rewarding career in the sector. Um, once you connect in the industry, you have the opportunity for an um, advanced um, level of, uh, I guess, uh, advancement and to be able to steer your career in the direction that you want to go um, just based on the experiences that you have and the opportunity to um, get mentorship and the benefit of networking and connected to industry associations um, the more that you kind of engage in that foundational learning and kind of be that sponge of knowledge and and building connections um, you're building the framework to be able to really step up and, and move into um, more advanced or more complex roles. Terrific. Um, there's a question here that refers, I think, to, uh, again, uh, what might happen in the future in the insurance industry. It says, how do you think the insurance industry will be the most impacted in the future? Wow, that's a, a really, big, <laughs> that's a really question. good question. Um, so I think that there are um, a few things. So one, um, the industry will be impacted by technology, there's no doubt. Um, you know, we've talked about some of the mm -hmm. ways that that's evolving and changing already. It will also be um, evolving in terms of our demographics. Um, we know that as we infuse additional talent into the pipeline, new perspectives are coming in, so it might influence the way that we do business um, going forward. So whether that's from the new grad marketplace or even the global talent or career changer streams that uh, Career Connections is, is committed to introducing the sector to. Um, so the, the demographics will continue to change and evolve in the face of insurance. Um, right now, as a 42-year-old woman, I'm curious the next time that we do the research, what that face will, will ultimately be on average. Um, we suspect trending younger mm -hmm. um, just by the fact that those retirements are happening. But the other, I guess, third influencer is what we don't know yet. Right. Um, you know, even the fact that we are live on Instagram and Facebook 10 years ago wouldn't have necessarily been uh, a thought process yes, in the it. way that we would deliver our message or the way that we would engage. Um, I wouldn't have necessarily said insurance might be done um, over an app, you know, in terms of, of getting that coverage or getting a quote. Um, into place so you know it's that that being at the I guess at the ready to evolve and change as, as society does and um, you know having a collection of skill sets that enable that innovation to go forward. It really is fascinating because I think it's a, it's quite dramatic how it does follow uh, the evolutions of technology and the changes in uh, the way business is done uh, and it has to really react uh, almost real time. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a history nerd, and if you actually look at the evolution of, um, of history over the, I guess, uh, years, you know, you can see where insurance also was in step, you know, the evolution from horse and buggy to automobile, the evolution in terms of like, you know, big fires, insurance really stepped in and made sure that fire prevention plans were in place, and they're, thankfully, they're still... Um, happening but they're not as frequent you know and so we're able to impact um, there's even the Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction um, <laughs> that is uh, out there thinking about ways to build better um, in terms of being able to be resistant to um, you know climactic change and the climate crisis um, you know ways to make sure that uh, our assets are protected you know it's even I, I can even contemplate that the insurance industry is madly uh, trying to adapt to the idea of space travel, space tourism, for oh, example. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's working on that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this is an interesting question. I guess it reflects sort of Gen Z's uh, response to uh, how, uh, how they feel secure within their careers, what they're looking for in terms of more security than perhaps earlier generations. Um, it says, how stable is the industry and will I have stability if, if I do get a job in insurance? Yeah, it's actually really interesting that you surfaced that, Mary. I was working with a group of students last week and I was asking them about their job goals. And normally I get job titles, right? Yeah. I actually heard stability 
reflected. Like that was like the first thing. Actually, my goal isn't necessarily what my job is. I want it to be stable. Um, and I think that that's something that the industry has in spades. We're so embedded into virtually everything we do in life and in business that the industry isn't going anywhere. It may evolve and change and the face may look a little bit different, but it's, it's always going to be there and um, is integral. The other stat that we can share is at the height of the last economic recession in the 2008 mm -hmm. to 2010s sort of economic downturn, um, we added 12,000 positions to our workforce. Wow. Um, and so um, even in times of economic peril, the industry actually responds often by um, being able to provide more security. And so we, we see that uh, quite frequently. Also in the event of you know, merger and acquisition or layoff, um, because the industry is so connected to one another, we find that the time in between roles, if there is a need to transition, is shorter than on average in the rest of the labor market. Uh, that's actually very encouraging. And I think um, we have seen the reflection of uh, young people caring more about that. They're more cognizant of the importance of having uh, some sort of uh, concept of security and knowing that they have a future paycheck and a future. Um, absolutely. I think it's stability, guiding, really guiding their choices these days. Stability is really important. Um, but the other thing that the industry has um, going for it is variety. Mm -hmm. um, my background, you know, working in, in career development over the years, I had a number of colleagues when I joined the Institute say, aren't you going to be bored working in one sector or one industry? And I said, no, it's actually a microcosm of the Canadian labor market. And if you think about it, you also have the opportunity to not just have a linear career path, can actually steer it and mo and evolve it in the directions that you want to go. So it looks much more like a squiggly line. And uh, I think that that's really exciting, um, a value proposition to have the flexibility to either deepen your specialization, move into um, maybe people leadership, become a technical expert, or even um, you know change directions altogether. I'm glad you you actually responded to that because we did have a question from Facebook about is it true that uh, insurance is is boring and clearly not. No, our our perspective is is that it's anything but. Um, you know, it's always changing, evolving. Individuals um, who work in the industry, I, I alluded to earlier, state very clearly um, that what they value most about the work is that it never looks the same. Even though they might be going out and meeting with clients um, and talking about similar products and services, there's personality dynamics. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of nuance. There are different questions or different uh, pieces to the puzzle that they need to put into place. Um, and same even on the claim side, no two claims are the same, no two policies are, are exactly alike. Uh, I just wanted to get to one more question from Instagram, uh, which I, I guess really flows naturally from what you're talking about, which is what are the most exciting areas of insurance in your view? If I had to choose like a career path for me, it would absolutely be into claims investigation. Um, those units are so fascinating to me in terms of, uh, you know, the accident reconstruction, the fire causation analysis. Very forensic. The, yeah. The, and the thinking work that goes into how did this um, occur and how might we be able to prevent it in the future? And also, who in fact is liable? Um, and so being able to have all of the objective kind of conversations and the science and the data to back that up, as well as the people element of working with them through what was potentially the worst day of their mm -hmm. lives, um, to be able to truly understand what's going on and, and how we might be able to help going forward. So that sort of critical analysis at the same time of having some empathy is really important. For sure, recognizing, um, uh, particularly on the claims side, those are the two key parts of that uh, equation. So we're, um, we're actually almost out of time, but I wanted to actually turn it over to you to uh, really tell our audience about what you think that um, they should be aware of and, and some final thoughts from you about if they want to know more, what should they do? Yeah, um, if you're looking to get connected to a career in insurance, let's start with curiosity. I think attending events like this, asking questions, starting to engage and starting to learn more about um, how your skills, your education and your interests could add up to a great career in our, in our industry um, is the starting point. 
The other then is starting to build your network a little bit. So you know, we've got a number of events that we host throughout the year. There's likely coming one close to you or um, you know, certainly things that you can uh, get involved with. Um, I so we post your events on, yes. our, on, on our website if you're interested in actually meeting some in, in insurance professionals. And uh, we've actually attended some of them and recorded them uh, in our Instagram stories. For sure. Yeah, no, it's great when uh, we can uh, meet you face to face on campus and introduce you to some of our industry stakeholders or perhaps you have the opportunity to network with some ambassadors. Um, those are all really great touch points to kind of start to learn more, even checking out what your local insurance institute might have to offer. So if you go to insuranceinstitute.ca and take a look at, um, at the institute in your area, there may be seminars or networking events. There's Battle of the Bands. Um, they are real life insurance bands who go out and uh, are raising money for charity at these events. And so they can be a lot of fun, but also a great opportunity for networking and engagement. Um, and the other is just to keep an eye out, you know, certainly start to get to know companies and start to get to know um, positions that are links to over 150 insurance organizations on our website. Um, it's a great opportunity to kind of get, get a feel for their culture, the roles that they have available. Keep an eye. I know that there are a number who are advertising on Telenig, um, you know, and uh, getting it getting a feel for what they might have available um, and understanding industry trends. So whether it's, um, you know, reading blog posts or being a part of our articles or content that we're publishing here or being a part of trade publications, all great ways to deepen your knowledge um, and uh, to build your connection within the industry. Trevor, I want to thank you very much for joining us and sharing your insights with our audience. Uh, really fascinating. Every time I speak to you, I learn more about the Insurance Institute and uh, the insurance industry as a whole. And uh, I think uh, the kind of thing, work that you do is really helpful for young people who are trying to hatch their careers into an exciting way to uh, develop uh, their careers in the future. So thank you, Trevor. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me and have an excellent day. <laughs> and if you... Uh, uh, joined us part way through uh, just be aware that we take the recording of this live chat and uh, we actually post it on our website and we'll also have uh, part of it uh, the highlights on our Instagram stories so thank you so much for joining us and don't forget to join us again for our next Talented Talks Live mm -hmm.